a garden. It's a garden, very good. On my home. Where I grew up here. Mm -hmm. So describe this garden for me. What does it look like? There are a few steps back mm -hmm. of the house. If you, if you, there's an entrance of steps mm -hmm. leading down, and there's lawn. It's a bit of an oval shape. And as you look at this garden, I'd like for you to focus on yourself, the observer. What do you look like there? I'm small, I'm a child. Mm -hmm. How old are you there? Three, mm -hmm. four. And are you alone or is there someone there with you? No, it's my mom. Mm -hmm. It's there. So what's happening today in this garden? It's a memory when I was small and it was spring. Mm -hmm. And my mom was hanging up the washing. Mm -hmm. Connect with your emotions and tell me what you feel. <sighs> my mom is wearing a yellow sweater. Mm -hmm. I run into her arms. Feel that. <sighs> I feel so safe. Mm -hmm. I want you to go ahead and feel that. Feel that hug. I want you to give your mommy a hug. Feel her hug. Put your arms around her now. Feel her. Hold her tight. I think it's the last time I felt safe and happy. Mm -hmm. I felt so happy in my arms. <laughs> what does your mommy tell you? Nothing. Mm -hmm. She just holds me. So I'd like for you to take that feeling and just absorb it into your body. It makes me sad because it's gone. Safety. Mm -hmm. This happiness is gone. Mm -hmm. But you're feeling safe right now in your mommy's arms. I want you to feel that now. Feel that wonderful feeling of being in her arms, of being loved, of being safe. What would you like to tell your mommy? Mm hmm Let's see what mommy says back. Mommy? I love you too. Mm hmm What would you like to tell your daughter today? I'm sorry. I've always loved you. Mm hmm I'm sorry I couldn't be there for you when I was supposed to. To each other. Talk to mommy. I should have protected you, but I couldn't. I'm sorry. I wasn't a good mother to you. Yes, you were. You were. It's okay. I miss you so much. I miss you so much. I miss having a mother. I miss having Someone I can kneel on. That gives me solace. There was so, so little solace in my life. Oh. Mommy, what do you have to say back? Have you left her? Have you truly left? I can't feel her. Mm -hmm. It's far away. Mm -hmm. Let's find out where mommy is. Where is she? I want you to go ahead and leave that little body behind. Leave that body and become spirit once again. And let's begin to drift and float through time and space and find out where your mommy is. Connect with her where she is. Be there now. Where is she? I don't know. Is she lost? No. Hmm. What does she say? Listen for her. I'm okay now. Mm-hmm. 
I was very lost for a very long time. I had to look at a lot of things I didn't want to look at. Mm -hmm. I punished myself for many things. I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, the way in which your mummy died was a very terrible way of dying. Let's find out from mummy why she chose to die that way. Connect with her now. Connect. I choked my life. Mm -hmm. Why does Beatrice need to know that? Why did she need to understand that you choked on life? Not to make the same mistake. Mm -hmm. Is she choking on life too? No. She's... She's hiding. Mm -hmm. She's afraid. What is she hiding from, Mummy? See her from a spirit world. What is she hiding from? To get hurt. Mm -hmm. More hurt. To be vulnerable. To reject it. To be rejected. Mm -hmm. Do you know why, Mummy, she came in here with all of these experiences? Did she choose this? The whole thing, she has taken too much on mm -hmm. for me. For me, this should have been my experiences. So she took on your experiences? At a point, yes. Mm -hmm. She should not have. She wants, she saw my weight, the weight I was carrying, and she saw how unhappy I was, and she wanted to take it away. Mm -hmm. So she's been carrying? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was mine to carry it. She carried too much. What else has she been carrying from other people? Pain. Mm -hmm. So much pain. Whose pain is she carrying now? Everybody's pain. Mm. Why does she take everybody's pain? Because she loves so much. Mm. <laughs> She's so much love inside of her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she feels that nobody wants it. But she she just throw it away. Mm -hmm. She wants to give all this love, but people don't want it. She doesn't want to want to know what to do with this love. Mm -hmm. So she's like a human vacuum cleaner, taking away everybody's pain. Is that fair for her? Mm. She doesn't know what to do with her own emotions too much. Mm -hmm. Are her emotions so much? Yes, it's mm -hmm. too much. She's not used to so much emotion. Mm -hmm. Where is she from, Mummy? She's a mantis being. She's a mantis. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing, Mummy, today to accompany your daughter to find out why she's here? And why she has taken on so much? Yes. Would you do that? Very good. So I'd like for you to stay with her during this session so we can travel together. Is that okay? Yes. I'm going to count from five back to one. And we're going to go back to that moment when she lived this other life before she was a human to find out why she came here. So take a deep breath in now. Five. Going through time and space to another time, another place. Four, to find the origins of why she came to planet Earth in this incarnation. Three, almost there now, accompanied by your mummy. Two, Allow the knowing to come and one be there now. What do you experience? Where are you? In space. 
and space. Very good. Describe to me what you experience in space. It's there. I love it. I really need space. I'm, I'm watching space. Mm -hmm. Where are you watching space from? Window. It's a huge window. Mm -hmm. it's, it's on another planet. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole wall is a curved big window. Mm -hmm. And it's dark outside. And I see all the stars. And you see all the stars. So the observer looking out this window, what do you look like there? I'm not a mantis. What are you? Um, blue. Blue. And I'm blue. I'm serious. And I have a big head. A big head. Mm -hmm. You know, like the back of my head. It's bigger than a human's. Mm -hmm. I'm very tall. What does your body look like? It's long. Long body? It's, it's, it's slim and tall. Mm -hmm. And look down at your feet. What do your feet look like? Oh, they're in shoes. In shoes. So you are wearing some type of clothing. Mm -hmm. What does your clothing look like? It's like a long robe. Mm -hmm. Of slightly sparkly fabric. Mm -hmm. And does this robe have any type of emblems or anything on it? No. No. It's different fabrics of mm -hmm. hues of like purple and mauve mm -hmm. and lavender. It looks very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very regal. Mm -hmm. And what is your position there? What do you do there? I'm a princess. A princess. That's dumb. Mm -hmm. What is the pro royal? Your royal. No, no, it's not royal. They don't have these. Not like here. Mm -hmm. It's not this. They're not more important or I'm shaking. <coughs> so by re being royalty, does that mean that you're honored more? It's more responsibility. Mm. It's a positive position. What are you responsible for on this ship? It's not a ship, I'm on a planet. Oh, you're on a planet. So you're on a planet that has a large window. Yes. Ah, I see. It's a ship. Okay. So tell me where it is that you are. Look around you. And it's dark as night. Mm -hmm. And I see like an, a moonlit uh, mountainous mm -hmm. surface. So it's you have a moon there? I don't see it, but it's, I can dimly see okay. mountains. Mountains. Are you alone in this place? Yes. Uh -huh. Right now I am. Okay. So what is it that you're doing there right now? I'm looking outside. Mm -hmm. Check in with your emotions. What is the reason why you're looking outside? I have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what's going on. What are you deciding? Whether to stay or go. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm shaking. So, where is it that you're going to be going to? Earth. Mm -hmm. What's on Earth? Gaia. Mm -hmm. Gaia needs help. What is going on with Gaia? Has Gaia requested help? She sent out a call. Mm -hmm. She sent out a call? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this call. She needs help. Ascension. Okay. So when she sent out this call, did it just go to your planet? No, everywhere, the whole universe. Everywhere. So what is it that you're deciding? Why is it such a difficult decision? Because I, I should, I'm not sure if the council think I should not go. Mm -hmm. Maybe I never wanted to. Mm -hmm. Because I have been on Gaia before. What has happened on Gaia before? <sighs> I was incarnated. Mm. 
15,000 years ago. And what happened 15,000 years? Was there something there to, at that time? It's in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But before the pyramids and everything. Before. And I was given a key. Tell me about this key. <sighs> it's the key of all keys. Mm -hmm. What does this key do? It's the key to ascension. It activates ascension. Why have you held this key for so long? I didn't know I... I didn't hold it. Oh. I was supposed to give it to humanity. Oh, okay. But... I sold the key. I gave it away. You gave it away? Because I was afraid. Mm. I was... I was afraid of the priest. It would kill me. Tell me more about this. I don't remember. Mm. But I felt I betrayed Gaia and mm. I didn't give the key. I didn't give the key to humanity. So that betrayal, how do you feel that in your heart? I feel unworthy. Mm-hmm. Have you been feeling this way for all this time? I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve to be Gaia anymore. Mm -hmm. But I love her so much. And I want to help her. And I want to make good. What is your name on this planet? What do you call yourself? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So let's go to a time when you do remember. We're going to now go to the time when you speak with your counsel about your decision. I'm going to count from one to three and you will be there. One, two, and three. Look around you and tell me where you are. The council room. The council room. What does the council room look like? Thin light and a big oval table, dark, silvery. Mm -hmm. And everybody's wearing these purplish robes. What kind of robes? Purplish. Purplish robes, mm hmm. And what do you wear when you address the council? Same. <clears throat> when you address the council, do you feel equal to the council? Or are they on a different level? <sighs> Same-ish. Mm -hmm. Same-ish. Mm -hmm. More like, it's like my father is amongst them, I think, and the family. Mm -hmm. So what is being discussed by the council today? I don't think. I see a man mm -hmm. and he says, I shouldn't go. That's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you recognize this man? Mm. It's my father, but mm. not, not, not my father now. Mm -hmm. How do you feel when your father tells you not to go? Rebellious. Mm -hmm. Because I always do everything to my own head. Mm -hmm. I never listen. I never listen. Mm -hmm. What do the others on the council tell you? They're patient, they're kind. And I should think about it. It might be too much for me. Mm -hmm. But somehow, some also think that this is what needs to happen. What would be your purpose for going to Gaia? <sighs> I have a key again. Mm -hmm. Who has given you this key? It's within my DNA. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I was, I don't know, myself, I don't know how I, who gave me the key. Mm -hmm. It's an energetic key. 
So this energetic key, when you are on Gaia, what does it do? It triggers the DNA changes that are necessary for ascension in other beings. Mm -hmm. Would you need to be around these people to activate them? Yes. Mm -hmm. So just by being on Gaia and emanating your energy is enough to begin the ascension? Is that right? Yes and no. Mm. That need, things need to happen. She's carrying it now, mm -hmm. but it isn't fully activated yet. The activation will happen in time. We have told her before, but she does not believe it. She, is, she cannot hear it. She cannot fully accept this mm -hmm. concept yet because she feels unworthy. Why is it that she's carrying so many emotions of not being worthy? Most of it has come about in this life mm -hmm. and experiences from her childhood. Mm -hmm. Does she choose these experiences? Yes. Mm -hmm. For what purpose? She needs to, she wants to, and she needs to understand human emotion. Mm -hmm. Did she choose to understand human emotions? Yes. Okay. So she put herself into these situations to feel it. Yes. Mm. But she also carries other people's emotions. Her mother told her that she took on all of her pain. She's strong and empathic. Mm -hmm. She reads people's emotions, she absorbs them. But she doesn't know what to do with them. She does not know how to channel and release these emotions properly. Mm -hmm. Can we teach her today? Yes. All right. What would you like to teach her about releasing all of these emotions? How can she do that? She needs appropriate rituals mm -hmm. right. to... Uh, she needs to be schooled. Mm -hmm. Who will be schooling her? She, if she will have people come into her life if she accepts it. Mm -hmm. She's very strong-willed and she has difficulties accepting being taught by others. Mm -hmm. is, is this because of her regal nature on that planet? Is she rebellious that way? She's always been like that. Mm -hmm. It's And it's also necessary for her purpose here on earth that she develops, has had to develop her own mind so not as not to be influenced by everything going on around her, all the vibrations that have been put into place to tear humanity down and to lower their vibration and to brainwash humanity. So she had to be kept very apart, not to fall too much into the same patterns. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but those situations of being kept apart has really torn her up. She feels she has no wor she's not worthy of love, she's not worthy of friendship. Yes, it has been a great hindrance. But it has now come, the time has now come to let all of this go mm -hmm. and to step into her assignment and her heritage. We have told her just a few days ago, we have made a transmission to tell her this, that it's time now, she needs to let this go. Mm -hmm. But it was important for her to develop compassion. She has been on earth before and she all, always in the function of priestess or priesthood and as a being not from here and she has not been a human she's not human she's not from here so to understand the depths of human emotion to which 
degree humans can despair and give up on themselves. She didn't understand. She she didn't look down on the humans, but it was too alien for her. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to understand how lost humans can get. It's the compassion she needs. She wanted to feel the compassion and understand. So many people on this planet are so lost and so alone and it's so much pain. But she's feeling it to the point where she <clears throat> has even torn down her body with pain, with this unworthiness. What can we do now? Is she ready to begin releasing all of this? She must be because now comes her time. Mm-hmm. She has been waiting for this all her life. This, as we told in the transmission, the experiences so far in her life have been very valuable. But now comes the true purpose of her incarnation. Mm-hmm. And we told her she has to take up the mantle. She has to stop, take up her assignment. Would you tell her what her assignment is? To guide humanity into ascension. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How is she going to do this? She's not to know all the steps yet. Okay. We have told her that there will she will be given information she has never dreamt of having, and that at the beginning she will not know how this information will come about. Mm-hmm. Now she is wondering if she has any gifts. You told her that she's very empathic, and she seems to be channeling very well. What other gifts does she have? She has many gifts, but she doesn't believe it. She mm-hmm. doesn't believe it. What kind of gifts does she have? She's very obstreperous. Mm-hmm. She has the gift to heal. She has the gift. She doesn't want to believe it, but she can heal if she wants to. Mm-hmm. She has the gift to create life anywhere she goes. She has the gift to give to make anything grow. We have told her that before. She can just go and touch something and it will grow. Is that why she works with nature? Yes. Mm -hmm. She loves Gaia so much. Mm -hmm. She loves all life so much and she loves animals so much. That's why she suffers so much Mm -hmm. when she sees the horrible abuse that is being afflicted on the animal kingdom on this planet. Mm-hmm. Now, when she was younger, she had some experiences that were very bizarre. She felt her body changing and morphing. What was going on at that time? Were there adjustments being made? Yes, she already knew that, that she had to adjust to this physical body mm-hmm. and the energy body, and it was very... She has issues of a very, very high vibration mm-hmm. and to come down into this density is very difficult for her. So she, these were energetic adjustments to this body. Mm-hmm. And she also says that she had a lot of sleep paralysis. These were demonic attacks. Okay. What allowed those attacks at that time? She was always a beacon, Mm -hmm. and she was always targeted. When did that change? Did she do something to change that? She was given, she seeked out the right healing modality from another human being. Mm -hmm. Is she still being targeted now? Yes, she is. Mm-hmm. So is, does she have any type of attachments with her now? Yes, she does. Okay. Should we deal with them now or later? 
later. Okay, very good. So she heard Blue Kachina in her dreams. What was that? That time is approaching. Mm -hmm. Time that many have, many, many have waited for for a very long time. Does the Kachina represent anything? She doesn't know. Doesn't have to notice that in the moment. Okay, very good. Right now, she is feeling very lost in what she does. Although she works with nature, she wants to know what her true calling is. You tell her that she is here to guide humanity into ascension, but what does that mean? When She's one of many. Mm -hmm. She's one of many, many people. What can she do for a living where she can do more of this activation because she, be, because she could be happy about it? She needs to be creative. In what way? Her photography, she should continue with that. It's very important. The photography? Mm -hmm. What else? Anything that she wants to be creative with, she just does not trust herself. Mm -hmm. She doesn't believe in herself. So for example, she gave me a gift <clears throat> of a lavender pillow. It was very creative. Very nice. And it touched my heart. Is this something that she should be doing more of? Not on a professional level. Mm -hmm. That's just part of her. Mm -hmm. So what can she do on a professional level? She needs to connect with people. Mm -hmm. Which is what she fears the most. Yes. Mm -hmm. How can she connect with them and not feel all of this self-hatred and all of this <clears throat> that she's feeling about herself? She needs to learn to trust herself, mm -hmm. but she does. I, we know that she will say, "But how?" Mm -hmm. But she has to do a bit of work herself. Mm -hmm. Now we've been doing a little work before the session, talking. Do you have any other advice for her to work herself up into trusting? She needs to allow herself to be guided mm -hmm. because she's so headstrong. <laughs> so on that planet, she was pretty rebellious, and here she is too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is she not wanting others to control her? Is that it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is this the regal part of her that comes through? Partially, mm -hmm. but it's also fear of being manipulated mm -hmm. and controlled. And she lose control. Mm -hmm. She has been betrayed many times. Yes. Those betrayals that she's had, including her childhood friends or schoolmates, <clears throat> was that necessary? Not necessary. Not in inevitable. Not necessary, okay. but inevitable. Why was it inevitable? From her makeup, mm -hmm. because her energy is just alien to many people, ah. and people don't know how to react to her. She knows all this. Mm -hmm. She's people don't know what to do with her, mm -hmm. and that makes her feel even more insecure and awkward. And then she withdraws even more. Mm -hmm. But she just wants to deeply connect with people and <clears throat> give her love to them. Mm -hmm. But then people have so many walls around them. Mm -hmm. And then they are afraid of her sometimes. 
because she's just too too much. She's too much, mm-hmm. and she feels she's too much, and then she wants to make herself very, very, very small. Mm-hmm. Does that benefit her? No, no. She needs to shine. She has such a bright light inside of her, but she doesn't believe in her light anymore. What was the part in her life that shut down that light for her? When she went to school, mm-hmm. and the children laughing at her. Mm-hmm. And now that she understands that she is not human, she is regal, she is here on a very important mission, should she be connecting with those that are like her? She dreams of having her soulmates, of mm-hmm. finding the soulmates. Mm-hmm. She has always known that she's not human. How can she find her soulmates? Her soul family? She doesn't know how. She doesn't know how. Mm-hmm. She, feels so, she feels so alone and so separated. Mm-hmm. Now, she wasn't feeling alone when she had her cat, Max, in her life. Yes. Who was Max to her? Why is he so beloved? He's her sole companion, and he has been her with her many, many times. He's has just a soul she knows and she has known for a long time. Mm-hmm. She loves him very much. Why did he choose to leave her life at that time? It was time for him to go. Mm-hmm. He was sick and he didn't want her to suffer seeing him getting sicker and sicker. Mm-hmm. Will he be back? Yes. Mm-hmm. Not, not necessarily in this life. Okay. But they will always be connected. <coughs> but he needs, she needs to know that he's okay and mm-hmm. that he forgives her. And of course he does. He mm. loves her very much. Does he have any more messages for her? He's always going to be there. Okay. Is he there with the other cats? Or is he for her? He's for me. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good. Now, we were talking about her soul group and how alone she feels and she wants to be able to manifest this encounter of having her soul group together with her how can she manifest this again she needs to believe Mm -hmm. she needs to reestablish contact in as her sister has told her in a channeling Mm -hmm. the whole planet is empty now because everybody has come to earth to help so actually they're all here somewhere Mm. so the planet where she came from where she's from has all come over or some one of her incarnations okay so she knows these yes she would Mm -hmm. but they're all uh, Planet. You're all over the planet. Will she ever meet them? Some of them. Okay. Her mother also was a mantis being. Okay. So is that why her mother said something about being a mantis? They were mantis together? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. And does she have a connection with her father? They have shared lives, mm-hmm. yes. Does she need to know anything about that? That you love her. She knows that already. Very good, very good. Now she lives in a place where there's a lot of nature, but she's wondering if she should be moving somewhere else. Should she sell the house? Should she change countries? Will this help her? Australia, at some point she has to go to Australia. Australia. What is the energy that's in Australia that she needs? It is. She has been on this planet since already at T 
the creation of the planet itself. Mm -hmm. And Australia is one of the few places who have this very strong connection back to the very archaic ancient, ancient times of Earth. Mm -hmm. And she needs to go there. Mm -hmm. There are certain activations take place. Mm -hmm. Will she need to do those activations by being there? Yes. Will she need to do any type of rituals to do this activation? Yes. Okay. Now, when she goes to these places, will she already know these rituals, or will people be coming to her to teach her before she goes? Both. Both. Okay. So she will actually have people contacting her to teach her this. She will find the right people at the right time. Okay. So she doesn't have to go out and looking for them. No. Okay. Good. She just needs to reconnect. She has all the knowledge within her. Mm -hmm. And we know that she hates hearing that because she feels so clueless. Mm -hmm. But she carries the knowledge within her. She needs to reconnect. Mm -hmm. Now, she does meditation now. Is she reconnecting? Somewhat. Mm -hmm. Do you give any advice to her regarding her meditation? She doesn't really have to meditate, but it's good for her. Mm -hmm. The reconnection is on a much deeper level. Mm -hmm. She needs to refight the trust. Okay. Good. Now her, um, somebody has given her a reading saying that she has a yoke on her shoulders. What does this mean? It's the weight of mm -hmm. that incarnation where she gave the key away. Okay. And she cannot forgive herself for that. Mm -hmm. Can we do some of that work today? She would love that, yes. Very good. So, if you would allow me to take her back to that lifetime and assist, I'm going to count from five back to one. And when we get to number one, we will be once again in that lifetime as the holder of these keys taking a deep breath in now as we begin to travel on five going through time and space four to that time in Egypt three allowing the images and the knowing to come two Getting clearer and clearer now. And one. Be there now. Use all of your senses. What do you experience? I'm in a big hall. Mm -hmm. In a temple hall. And it's night. And there are high pillars of a very dark brown stone and a long, it's very long, very big and at regular intervals there are uh, like bowls of stone and fires burning in them mm -hmm. in, in twos around the hall and just some kind of um, on pedestal, it's all the same rock. Mm -hmm. And yeah, stairs. And it's very quiet. So turn your focus on yourself. Look down at your feet. At Wearing your sandals. Sandals. Uh huh. Look at your body. I'm very. I'm tall. I'm very slim. Mm -hmm. I have dark skin. Look um, at your features and your head. Beautiful. And I um, have braided, braided dark black hair. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you carrying anything? No. Mm -hmm. 
So what is that you're doing in this beautiful temple today? I'm anxious. What's happening on this day? I'm afraid that the priests are going to kill me. Mm -hmm. Because they think I have too much power. You have much power? They think I have too much power. Ah, mm -hmm. Tell They're me afraid more. of me. They know I'm not human. Mm -hmm. My spirit is not human. And they know I'm the key bearer. As it has been foretold. They were awaiting my birth. Mm -hmm. How old are you now? Young. I'm not very old. How old do you feel there? Seventeen. Mm -hmm. So as you're walking in this temple, do you feel any presence around you? There are gods and servants somewhere. Mm -hmm. So let's continue and see what happens next. I don't know what to do. Because I don't, I don't know, this. I need to fulfill my assignment, but I don't know where to go. I can't really go away anywhere, I can't hide. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I feel they're going to kill me, but for the time being, the awe or the respect for me being the key bearer and the fear of me being too powerful is in balance, but I feel this balance can change very soon or very quickly. Mm -hmm. So continue and see what happens next. What's the next appropriate scene to tell this story? I gave them the key. Mm -hmm. You give the priest the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a well, it's an energy transfer. Mm -hmm. I give away my power. I give away my power, all my power. So feel your body there. I feel empty mm -hmm. and purposeless. You take a look at the one you gave the key to. It's so collective. Mm -hmm. It's deep magic. I gave it to them. To save your life? Yes. Mm -hmm. But now my life is purposeless. Mm -hmm. So let's close that scene and let's go to the last day of your life. Be there now. I'm in the desert. I'm in the desert. I'm a withered, withered old woman. Mm -hmm. How old are you there? Fifty-six. Mm -hmm. I've lived a purposeless life. And I live with regret every day. I betrayed humanity. I betrayed myself and my purpose. So let's go to the last moment of your life in that lifetime. What happens to your body? I just leave it. It's mm -hmm. an empty shell. <clears throat> so follow that, that journey away from that body. Detach yourself from that body and allow yourself to once again be back home in front of that council. What is said to you in that council? It's not, it's a different council. It's a different council. It's my my spirit comes. Mm -hmm. What did they tell you? All is good. This was meant to happen. Mm -hmm. 
because humanity wasn't ready for the key. Mm -hmm. And you needed to experience the fall. How does that make you feel? Angry. Mm -hmm. Tell me why. Because I tore myself apart. Mm -hmm. And now finding out that it, that it was meant to be like that. Mm -hmm. So look inside of your own soul. Why can you not forgive yourself? supposed to be perfect. Mm. Is there such a thing as perfection? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Because perfection has to do with experiences. Everybody experiences things differently. What may be perfect to one may be perfect and not be perfect for another one. It seems to me that you had expectations of yourself. Yes, I've always held myself to a very high standard. Mm -hmm. But you've been told by your counsel that humanity was not ready. Yes. You saw that you gave those who you felt you can entrust this to, to use it. Oh, I knew they would not be able to mm -hmm. use it properly. And those on earth were not ready to receive that key. Oh. So can you see that you have been holding on to this anger for no reason? It wasn't ready yet. They were not ready. And can you see how you are affecting all of the incarnations of your soul. Look at how you are affecting the lifetime of Beatrice. Yes. Your expectations of perfection are flowing to her. Yes. And she doesn't even know what perfection is. Because she is a reflection of your soul. Look at the life of Beatrice, trying to live up to your expectations. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So how are you making her feel? Worthless. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to Beatrice? No. no, it's not fair. What would you like to tell Beatrice? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> you need to let go. Nothing. Everything is perfect in itself. Mm -hmm. Everything is meant to be the way it comes, the way it is. So the soul, this piece of your soul that has come here to earth now, to once again work with humanity on this ascension, can you see now that humans are more ready than when you came last time? Yes. Mm hmm so rather than affecting and infecting Beatrice and not allowing her to do her job this time, can you let go yourself of something that you thought you did wrong? I try. Mm -hmm. Could I assist you in removing that from you? Please do. I'm going to put my hand over your heart and I want you to let go of all of those feelings of not doing the right thing. That fear that came upon you of having too much responsibility. Of that blame of giving away your power to someone and living an empty shell, knowing you gave away that power of not being good enough in your own mind in your own soul. Let's remove all of that from you. 
and tell me when I have all of that out. That thorn that has been bothering you through all eternity. I know, I can't feel these repeats coming out at all. Mm -hmm. Let's take it all out and let's pull it out. Let's pull it out the same way that Beatrice pulls out all of that energy from those around you. We're going to pull it all out. And now that you have been an empty shell for so long, what would you like to put into your soul's heart? Love. And let's put a big fire hose of love going in, pumping in. Self-respect. Mm-hmm. Let's so, feel it in. Let's, let's have it all come in. Self-respect. Self-love. Self-love. Feel it going in. Allowing yourself with each breath to spread that energy of love, self-respect, and self-confidence into your being, knowing that you are perfect just the way you are. Seal all of that in. And now feel that love within your heart. And as you reflect that love, see how all of the incarnations connected to you are feeling it from you. Feel the peace knowing that you are perfect just the way you are. That you did the best that you could with what you had. And now, with love in your heart, self-respect, confidence, you can move forward as a soul, affecting all of those who have work to do. What advice now can you give Beatrice from that perspective? Trust. Mm -hmm. Trust. Learn to trust. Don't be so afraid all the time. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we're going to now disconnect from that piece of soul, that fractal. Completely disconnect. And now let's bring it back to your higher self. As you've seen, the soul was affecting the lifetime of Beatrice. Look at her now and tell me, how has that affected her now? Can you ask the question again, please? Now that we know that that soul was affecting the lifetime of Beatrice now, and we've made some changes to that soul, how will that reflect in the lifetime of Beatrice? She still has a long way to mm -hmm. go. She has to work on herself. Mm -hmm. She does hope so much for a, a magical pill she can swallow. Mm -hmm. But she also she doesn't want to accept that that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. And that she really has to want it. These beliefs are very deeply, deeply, deeply ingrained within her. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a program. Let's find out about that program. Would you do a scan on her body? And let's see if anything has been altered or if there are any implants or attachments in this body affecting her. There is a program in place somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's find that program. Let's find that program. In her heart. All right. So I'd like to ask, not only for her higher self, but those that are experienced in implant and in programming to assist today. Is that okay? Yes, please. All right. So I'd like to ask those beings that are experts at deprogramming what what hacking has been done in her heart and let's take a look deep in her heart and see what's there 
what has been placed in her heart? It's been put there by the dark ones. Mm -hmm. Because her light is too bright. Mm -hmm. And it has to be dimmed. They do everything in their power mm -hmm. to draw out ascension. They know they can't stop it, that they're still trying. Mm -hmm. All the beacons on this planet, like her sister as well, have been heavily affected mm -hmm. by all sorts of attacks. And because she has too much love in her heart to hate people, usually it works the program that they make them hate each other and hate people mm -hmm. but it doesn't work with her so they made her hate herself so when was this put into her heart oh when she was very small mm -hmm. what was happening at that time that allowed this programming to take place when she, her mother tried to kill herself okay so in that moment it allowed them to come in and reprogram her heart. Is that it? Another moment as well. It's just the vulnerability of their childhood. Mm, okay. So take a look at that and see what is attached to that program. To self-doubt, to self-hatred. Okay. Can she remove this or does it take expertise to remove this? She needs help. Okay. Who can we call upon today that is expert at this? St. Michael. St. Michael. Very good. Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have Archangel Michael step forward. He does have a blue flame sword, which I'd like for him to use to assist in the surgery of removing this program. So as Archangel Michael performs, I'd like for you to tell me what it is that he's doing. I see blue flaming hands, well, flames that look like hands mm -hmm. around my heart, working on my heart. And there is this thing there, it's very hot, like metallic. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to take it out. What kind of shape does this metallic thing have? Square. Square, mm hmm It's all... Uh, it's integral, but squarish, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know. It's weird, complex, weird, complex. Mm hmm Geometry. What's happening now? I think it's taking it apart bit mm. by bit. Mm hmm Removing the songs. Solving it somehow. Mm hmm. How does that feel? It's better. Mm hmm. Still working on it. Mm hmm. I need to go to the loo. What is it? I need to go to the loo. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the shoulder. And when I touch the shoulder, Beatrice will be able to open her eyes. I'll remove the microphones. And when she comes back, she's going to go even deeper than she is now. Eyes open. Focusing on that heart. Once again, seeing what it is that Archangel Michael is doing to the heart. I see filaments taking out, being taken out. Mm -hmm. Like, 
hooks are good in my heart. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and as they are being removed, I want you to just connect and see how that is affecting the heart. It's nice and pink again. Mm -hmm. And when he is completely finished, this will take this will go on for some time. Okay, very good. And in the meantime, is there anything that we can use to begin bringing that heart back to life? Golden light. Very good. Light. Very good. So I'd like for you to go ahead and begin bringing that golden light in. You can bring either bring it in through the crown chakra or the heart chakra. Which, very good. So bring in that golden light and start flooding that heart with golden light. And I'd like to request for Archangel Michael to continue working until it's over. And as we continue the scan of the body while he works on that, let's see what are the things come up in the body that needs attention today. I'm getting a headache. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's address that headache and let's find out what is causing that headache. I'd like for you to focus in, intensify the discomfort, make it stronger. Make that headache very strong. And let's find out if that is something that Beatrice created or is it attached to her? What is this in her head? It's attached to her. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm going to bring that, my hand up and bring that energy down. Down, 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 down. You can express yourself, brother. Are you male or female? Male. Male. What is your name, please? Blob. Blog? Blob. Blob. Blob, how long have you been there with her? A long time. Um, how old was she when you found her? Teenager. Teenager. What was happening in her life in order for her to be so vulnerable that you can attach to her? She became sexually active. Okay. And so when she became sexually active, what did that do for you to attach? She was open, very open heart was open, she fell in love. Mm -hmm. Blob, have you ever had a physical body before? I'm not sure. Mm. So what is it that you are? What kind of consciousness are you? Are you of Gaia or are you of, of, of another place? Where do you come from? I don't remember. You don't remember. So it's been a long time mm -hmm. since you've had any type of body. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you're doing with her? I tell her to hate herself. Oh, why do you tell her to hate herself? I might be that scribe, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. There was. <coughs> mm -hmm. She saw this one in a meditation. All right. So, Blob, I'd like for you to go back in time. I'm going to count from three back to one, Blob, and I'd like for you to see your last incarnation. Three, two, and one. Be there now. I was a scribe in Egypt. You were a scribe in Egypt. And what happened? I was in love with her, mm -hmm. and she was young and so beautiful, she lived in the palace. <coughs> and were you able to connect with her, scribe? No. She so she walked, she thought that was small and puny, mm -hmm. well I thought that was small and puny, and she just walked by me so every day. I didn't even rec register me or recognize me. Mm -hmm. You felt very insignif insignificant. 
Yes. <clears throat> How did that affect you, Scribe? I hated her. Mm -hmm. You hated her because she didn't love you. Yes. That's not really hate. That's not hate, blob. That's you, feeling insignificant. She was not of your level. Yes, I felt small and worthless. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't her that you hated. You hated yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now, why have you come to follow her in this incarnation? Because I want her to suffer as much as I did. Mm. I want her to feel small and worthless and ugly and insignificant as I did. Wouldn't it be better, Scribe, for you to feel that love that you've been wanting all this time? Of course, but mm. it wasn't given to me. Well, you had that love within you all this time, Scribe, and you didn't even know it. Do you know that you carry this love within you? It's right there in your heart. Take a look. It's a little white light. Find that light now. Tell me when you find it, Scribe. I don't see it. You don't see it because you don't want to see it. I know what you're going to say, Alba. You say that to everybody. Mm -hmm. And you're afraid. Scribe, you're just afraid of love. You've been hating yourself so much that you don't feel that you're worth the love, don't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you are the worth the love. Because you came from love, and that's your true nature. And by hiding yourself in self-hate, you don't allow yourself to feel the love. And today, you are not here by coincidence. You're here for me to help you find that love again. I need to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. So we're going to now connect and ask, who would you like to forgive you? Beatrice or the princess? Everybody. Mm -hmm. So we're going to now bring together all of those souls that you have hurt. Who else have you hurt? I don't know. I just want it. <clears throat> I'm going to count from one to three, Scribe. And I want you to see all of those that you have heard in front of you. One, two, and three. See them now. Who are they? So many. So many. My family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and... Girl, she wasn't a princess, she was just a palace girl. Mm -hmm. My family and like people I worked with because I was just a miserable mm -hmm. all the time. So, Scribe, now that you are seeing all of these people, I you, to be forgiven, they need to see you for who you are. They need to see that light within you so that they understand. Bring up that light now. Bring it up so you can light them all up. I don't know where it is. I lost it. It's right in your heart. Look right there. Make it. Somebody has stolen my light. No one has stolen your light. You have hidden it deep within. Start pulling out all of those layers that you've been hiding this light in. You cannot exist without this light. No. Oh, even the dark ones have the light. It's always there. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Keep focusing. You will see it. It may be like a little tiny grain of sand, but it will begin to sparkle. It's like a little grain of sand that begins to spark up. And you will see it. See it. Now make that little sparkle a little bit bigger and make it expand out. Expand out, make it so bright that all of those there that you have hurt 
will see that light and be blinded by it. Keep making it bigger. But they need to forgive me. Mm, once they see the light, they can forgive you. Afraid. Mm. You wouldn't be here unless you were meant to be with me to help you. I'm here with you to guide you. Expand that light and feel that love within you. What if I'm going to get lost? You'll never get lost with the light. You will never get lost. Keep expanding that light. Keep expanding it. And while you expand that light, scribe, I'm going to bring in all of the angels of the light and have them surround you and guide you. Feel their presence all around you as you do this exercise. Bring that light brighter and brighter. Connect with that light. Feel the love. I feel more love now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now, as you expand that love to all of those that you hurt, connect with their hearts. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I want you to now feel them. Do they forgive you now that they feel your love? They've always loved me. Mm -hmm. Can you forgive yourself for hiding this love? I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Expand that heart even more. Bring that light. And I'd like for you to connect to the love of the Creator. The unconditional love that you've been seeking. How does that feel, scribe? I can't feel it yet. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Beatrice can forgive you. Beatrice, can you forgive, scribe, for loving you so much that he wanted you to feel his pain. Can you forgive? I forgive you. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to send him your light, that golden light. Send it to him. Direct it to him. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I know how it feels like not to love yourself. I'm sorry for you. Mm -hmm. And I hope you find it the way I hope I find very good. So send him that golden light that you put in that heart so that he could feel the forgiveness. And take a deep breath in. Scribe, how does that feel to be forgiven? I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. So now that all of those that you thought you needed forgiveness from that loved you all along, I'd like for you now to make the decision to go to this light, to find this love. Are you ready to do that now? Yes, I am. So I'd like for you to disconnect completely from her body, pulling out all of the cords, all of the anchors, all of the hooks from her body. Tell me where they are. Everywhere. Uh-huh, pull them all out. And Beatrice, I want you to go within your body and slice away all of these connections with the scribe. As you cut them, they will dissolve on both ends. So the scribe is free to leave with the angels. Go in peace. Very good. Scribe, may the light of the universe always accompany you. Archangel Michael, please accompany him to the light. Scribe, tell me when you get there. They will guide you. I think he's gone. Very good, very good. So I'd like to ask, all of these symptoms that Beatrice was feeling, were they mainly due to scribe? The migraines? The problems in her gut? No, something else. 
something else. What's going on with her gut? There's something there. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at what's there. Zero in on it, zoom in. What does it look like? Is it something that she created? I'm not sure. All right. So I'd like for you to begin intensifying the discomfort in her belly. Make it stronger. Make that discomfort stronger. And let's find out if that discomfort has any shape or color. I think she created it herself. Mm, very good. So let's find out the origin of where this was created. So I'd like for Beatrice to come up with a word or a sentence associated with this discomfort in her belly. What comes to mind? Stuckness. Very good. So I want you to go ahead and begin saying stuckness over and over again out loud until we go back in time to find out where the stuckness began. Begin saying it now. Stuckness, 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 mm -hmm. stuckness, 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 <gasps> the womb. Mm -hmm. Keep going. What's going on in the stuckness. womb? I feel stuck. Mm -hmm. Stuckness, stuckness, stuckness. Yes, I feel stuck in my mother's womb. What's happening in the mother's womb that is making this this child feel so stuck? Oh, I don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so, so small, and I feel trapped. I feel trapped. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I don't want to be here. I feel very trapped. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you, in that womb, to connect with your spirit guide. Connect now. What does your spirit guide tell you about this stuckness? It's temporary. Mm -hmm. I knew it wouldn't be easy. And you agreed to this. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to go through this. But she's very freedom loving. Mm -hmm. She hates to be confined. Mm -hmm. And in small places. And free, she hasn't had a lot of inclinations in such dense matter. She's more used to free-flowing inclinations. Mm -hmm. So why is she creating something in her tummy? It just expresses the being blocked and and. Does she need that in this lifetime? No, of course not. Mm -hmm. So she what blocked herself? She blocked herself. So it was kind of like a little souvenir from her own experience to remind her of her she discomfort. She took it with, yes, ah. this feeling of being stuck. Mm -hmm. Does she need to continue feeling stuck any longer? She doesn't in... want to, know. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what this is that she placed in her gut to give her all of these dis uncomfortable feelings. What did she put there to block it? An, it's an energy blocker. All right. Does this energy have any shape or form or color? Can't see it. Can't see it. But she is empathic, and you have already told her that she is a natural healer. She makes things grow. All she has to do is use her intention and touch it. So I'd like for her to use her hands to form an energy ring around her tummy. And I want her to go ahead and begin to dissolve this blockage. Knowing that she has the power it's also a lot of suppressed emotions mm -hmm. because she just she had to watch her mother being mm -hmm. very overly emotional 
And so she didn't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. So she swallows all her emotions instead of expressing them. Now there are times when I'm sure that she has gone to a restaurant and had something to eat that did not feel good. Mm -hmm. And this sometimes made an explosion in her toilet. Mm. Hardly ever she's chronically constipated. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's had it. Mm -hmm. And would it be a good idea to keep all of that that she was finally able to release in the toilet as a souvenir? No. No. What do we usually do when we have these explosions of emotions in our toilet? Flush. Flush it. So today, do we need to hold on to all of these things that she has been holding for all of these people, from her mother, from her bullies, from all of those? No. All right. No. So let's begin to flush them out. Use the energy to dissolve and release all of this out. You can use a color. What color would represent this? Blue. Very good. So if allow that color to go into that chakra. And begin to spin that chakra in blue. Which chakra? The chakra right there where you have. Okay. Just spin it like a fan. Imagine the energy of blue spinning it in the front of the belly and behind the belly. Just make a big vortex of energy, mm -hmm. releasing all of that toxic waste, all of those emotions, mm -hmm. all of those feelings that she has trapped. And you may even notice some of it just spinning off like something hitting a fan, mm -hmm. allow that all to spin away. You may find it coming up faster and faster, spinning out of that vortex with that blue. You may even notice changes in the energy, changes in the color. What is happening now with the stuckness? I'll try to imagine the spinning. Mm -hmm. We don't have to try to imagine. Just imagine. Like a fan. Almost like a, a tornado. Of spinning just right through that area of blue. And if it slows down, just spin it a little bit more. And this is a very good exercise to do, even on a daily basis, mm -hmm. before she mm -hmm. sleeps or mm -hmm. before she wakes. Mm -hmm. Bringing that tornado of energy, mm -hmm. spinning out anything that's stuck to mm -hmm. her. Very good. Check in with your body and tell me how that body feels now. I have my cervical vertebrae are hurting very much mm -hmm. and it's extremely tight here. Mm -hmm. So take a look at that and let's see what kind of energy is in that area. What energy do you see there? Is it something attached or is it something that was created? I'm not sure. All right. So let's take a look. This was an accident, correct? Mm -hmm. Was this an accident? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So let's no. find out when this happened. I'm going to count from five back to one, and we'll go back to the time that created this discomfort. Begin now with a deep breath, five, going back through time and space. Four, to the origin of the discomfort. 
three, allowing the images to come now, two, understanding, and one, be there now. What is the origin of this? Where does it come from? What comes into this mind? Well, I want, <laughs> I want to say it's a, a source of crash. Mm-hmm. It's crash in a space crash. Mm-hmm. What happened? Feel it and see it. Did this happen to this soul or to someone else? To me. Mm-hmm. What happened in the spacecraft? Um, I don't know, some accident. Mm -hmm. Got crushed and I guess the spine affected. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's correct, I don't know. Did this happen on Gaia or did this happen somewhere else? Somewhere else. All right. Why is this soul carrying this memory? I want you to think of what happened during that crash. I want, I'm going to tap your forehead and remember. What were you thinking when you crashed that saucer? I think I should have, at that location, shouldn't have flown out. Mm -hmm. Once again, I just didn't listen and did what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then I crashed. Mm -hmm. And I obviously felt very guilty because I did what I was, mm -hmm. I was warned. Mm -hmm. Do you need to hold on to this guilt any longer? It's resonant mm -hmm. with her because she very often does things she knows she should um, mm -hmm. do and she does them nevertheless. Mm -hmm. She it she knows that this is a reflection of her mm -hmm. pig headedness, of her rigidity sometimes because she just doesn't want to listen. So did she bring this in as a reminder? It's it's a resonance of okay. this uh, a character trait that mm -hmm. she has now. So does she need this discomfort any longer? Does she need to have her spine degenerating? Does she need to have this crumbling inside of her? How far does she need to take this? I want to say she does need it because otherwise she will not listen. Mm -hmm. That she also needs to. Have, she knows that she has to listen to her body mm -hmm. when to stop. Mm -hmm. And this is also an effect of her just doing too much, mm -hmm. working too hard in this area. So, what would you recommend? She needs to listen to her body. Okay. Can we do something with her bot with her spine? With her neck. She knows that she needs to let go of the work she's doing now, mm -hmm. or some of the work she's doing now, because that's where it's exacerbating it. She knows that when she does other activities, it doesn't hurt that much and she'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But she can't let go because she doesn't know what to do, where to go. So it's her choice. It's her choice. So when she lets go of this job and starts doing things that are creative, yes, and things that really bring her joy, yes, she needs to let go. Okay. Can I request on her behalf that when she finally lets go of this job and starts doing things, that we can have all of this taken care of in her neck? Can you work on her neck? Yes. Very good. So that she will feel instantaneous relief once she gets this off her back. Yes. Very good. Thank you so much. What's going on with her eyesight now? There's something in her left eye. Mm -hmm. What is that that's in her left eye? 
An attachment. Okay. So let's find out what's there. I'm going to place my hand over that left eye and bring that attachment down, 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 down. Offer you her lips. Good afternoon. Are you the one in her eye? Yes. Are you male or female energy? Don't know. Don't know. Tell me why you're in her eye. I was sent there. You were sent there. Who sent you there? I don't know. Hmm. Well, it'd be kind of silly for you to go somewhere without knowing who sent you there. I'm, I'm an energy form. You're an energy form. So this energy form that you are, was it created by another human? On Gaia. I think so. All right. So I want you to go ahead and begin following yourself all the way back to who created you. I'm going to count from five back to one, and I want you to see who was the one that created you and put her in, put you in her eye. Five, going back in time and space following your line. Four, back to the person who created you. Three, allow the image to come. Two, see who it was who created your this thought. And one, get a clear understanding now. Who created you? Somebody was jealous. Mm-hmm. Where was this? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't see. Was she a child? I don't know. All right. Now, this person that was jealous, what were they jealous of? You're the thought. What was the thought? Her light. Mm-hmm. They were jealous of her light. Very good. So if you are a thought form, if you are an energy form, you can be transformed. What is it that you're doing now to her eye? I don't make her see. You don't make her? Okay, very good. So I'm going to now ask for Beatrice. Beatrice, you look at this form. Someone has created you, has created this thought form because they were jealous of your light. What would you like to experience instead of not being able to see? Clarity. Clarity. Very good. So, in order for us to get rid of this thought, we need to transform this thought. So I'd like for you to ask this thought form if it would like to be transformed into clarity. Would you like to be transformed into clarity? What do you accept? Receive? Yes. Very good. All right. So I'd like for you now to imagine this thought in your eye and tell me what it looks like to you. What do you imagine it to look like? Uh, a um, not clear yellow. All right. And what does clarity look like to you? Like very clear crystal water. very good all right so i'd like for you to go ahead and begin using your energy field to begin to transform this yellow into this crystal clear and tell me when you have transformed it Mm. I'm having problems. My headache is getting stronger. Mm -hmm. Are you using a lot of energy? Keep transforming it. If you like, you can even create it into a crystal. 
transform that energy into a crystal, clear. And tell me when you see the crystal. I've got problems with that. Mm -hmm. Imagine. All right, what's happening there? What is blocking that? The pain distracts me. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what that pain is. Let's follow that pain and see what that pain is. Pain, 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 pain. Who are you? Resistance. Resistance. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Why is this pain? Why is it? It's her mm. inner resistance mm -hmm. to change. Yes. So if she doesn't want to see clearly, if she wants to resist, how can she do her mission? It's not to see clearly, it's just the pain was there before, it's mm. just getting stronger. Okay. So I'd like to ask for Archangel Michael to assist. I'd like him to go ahead and use those flaming hands to burn away any of this resistance. Hold her head in your hands. And while we do that, I'm going to bring all of the other angels who assist me here today and just have them put their wings around her. Cradle her so that she can feel the love. As she lets go of this resistance and makes that vision crystal clear. It's almost like having a crystal in her left eye. She can make it as big as she wants to, like a big diamond in her eye. And when she finds this beautiful diamond in her eye, she can then reflect her beautiful golden or white light back to the person who sent it to her. Because they were so jealous of her light, she can now reflect it even stronger to them so that they can feel that light themselves. So she can be of service. How does that feel? Better. Very good. Very good. Now she has a very interesting growth on her hip. Let's take a look at that and see what that is. I don't know. Mm, let's take a look. I'd like to ask for the non-physical physicians to do a scan and bring in all of their tools. And let's scan that structure and see what that is. What's it made out of? What is she keeping in there? Take a look and see. Are there emotions in there? Are there things in there? What comes to mind? What's the first thing that pops up? What is that stuff in there? Pain. Pain. Who's pain? Is it her pain? Yes. Mm. She's been hiding her pain in her hip? There are some things she has suppressed. Mm -hmm. Experience she has suppressed. Mm -hmm. And... Yes. Is she ready now to release all of those? Can she forgive herself for all of these experiences that she's held back on? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put my hand over her heart. And I want her to bring up all of those suppressed feelings. All of those things she's been hiding. Keeping them there. Pull them all out. You may feel 
almost like little worms coming out. As all of these things, all of these feelings, all of these emotions, all of these things she couldn't talk about to anyone come out. We're going to give them right back to God, to her creator. She doesn't need to hold us any longer. Feel them coming out. They may even come out with little emotions. Wanting to be told. It's such a shame of the eating this whole time. Mm -hmm. Does she need to hold on to that shame any longer? No, oh, she shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Pull them all out. In trying to be perfect, she kept unbalancing herself. Going from one extreme to another. We now know that she had an influence that didn't want her to love herself the way she was. She has forgiven scribe, she has forgiven herself. She doesn't need to be reminded anymore. She doesn't have to remind herself that she's not perfect by growing that thing. We know that she is able to make things grow wherever she wants. But on her hip is not very pretty. So let's bring all of that out. Let's pull it by the weeds, like a weed, pull it right out and give it to me. Pull all of those things she planted in there and tell me when I have them all. Thank you. Take it out. Send it to the universe for healing. And now, I'd like to call in Archangel Raphael, the healer, and have him put his beautiful green healing light into her whole body, focusing on any areas that need extra attention. And bring in that peace and love with healing. And now that we've gone through all of this, all of her questions have been answered today. Is there anything that I did not ask that you would like to tell Beatrice right now? She needs to learn to trust that she is just perfect the way she is. Very good. And that she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that we love her very much. Mm -hmm. And how big is her team? It's not a team, it's just her higher self. Her higher self, very good. She's part of a collective, a cosmic collective. Mm -hmm. We're always there for her. Very good, very good. Is there anything else? Or are we complete today? Very good. Thank you very much for all of the assistance you've given Beatrice today. It's been a beautiful session. Welcome back. Mm, thank you. How do you feel? Well, my back still hurts, seriously. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm okay. It takes time. You were told why. Yep. I am very stubborn when you They're stop being stubborn, stubborn. <laughs> then they'll stop reminding you oh gosh sometimes yeah. mm. that's what happens you will need to be reminded mm -hmm. and when you start honoring mm -hmm. yourself things will change yeah. right yeah lots of resistance i love the resistance this was a beautiful 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 session really it was beautiful yeah oh fantastic fantastic how do you feel you feel at peace? Be all over the place right now. Mm. All over the place. There was a lot. Yeah. A lot that was said. Yeah. A, a it, lot of it had to do with this past life of yours. Yeah. In which you gave up your power, but then you didn't even know that the power couldn't be used yeah. anyway. It yeah. wasn't, they weren't ready for it. Yeah. And you came back now and said, you know what? Yeah. They're ready now. Yeah. It's all right. Actually, it's the second time I came back. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to tell you that. I didn't have to. It doesn't matter. The fact is, this is your mission. This is your specialty. But... Of many people, I'm not special. No, no, but it, I mean, it's your specialty. Yeah. You know, other people have yeah. different specialties, yeah. but this is why you came here this mm -hmm. time. Yeah, most of, almost every, almost everything I already knew, mm -hmm. but I just didn't, didn't trust it enough. That's what you need to trust. Yeah. We all need to get past the doubts. Yeah. The only way I do my work is to not doubt mm -hmm. and to trust. Yeah. To trust that I will be saying the next word yeah. that is important yeah. to hear. Mm -hmm. I don't plan anything. Yeah. Just I just trust for it to happen. And yeah. this is the important thing of trusting in the ability that you have this very strong connection with your higher self. Mm -hmm. You do. And you don't have to do anything except just be and do what comes naturally mm -hmm. and not to resist. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was nice. This was really nice. Mm -hmm. I love this session. It was really uh, nice. Thank you. It was wow. Okay. It was so vivid okay. to just hear everything. Okay. It, it was really, really nice. Thank you. How do you feel about it, though? Just very self-conscious at the moment. <laughs> Camera. Um, and the camera was on you the whole time, you know that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, sure, I know, but I know, I'm, not sta I'm staring at it now. Yeah. It's, it's good because I, a lot of it, as I told you, I've heard before and it mm. was a confirmation and yeah. um, I'm amazed, mm. absolutely amazed. And your conscious mind is saying, I think I made it all up. Absolutely. So yes. why would you make that up? <laughs> I don't know. I and that's know, the question. Know. You know, people, it, this feels like you're making it up because it's coming from the part of your mind that you use for your imagination. So your conscious mind, your mm -hmm. ego is going to say, well, yeah. well, since it's coming from there, you're yeah. making it up. Mm -hmm. But that's what the ego does. Yes. The ego likes to yeah. always like, yeah. have the last word. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a very difficult for me to to turn off and to mm -hmm. trust in in what's coming through so mm -hmm. if anyone else is uh, out there who feels the same way you know, not to give up and yeah and trust. you you were told this many many times trust 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 yes. trust yes yeah again and again yeah and i know it and i still go no 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 <laughs> no, no, no it's not true and it can't be true and and like your higher self said this is not a magic pill that you yes. can just take it yes. instantly. You're a new yeah. person. Absolutely, you have to work yeah. on yourself, and our our guides are working on us all yeah. the time. They're constantly telling us. They're constantly reminding us, but we don't mm -hmm. listen. Yes, we're very stubborn. Yeah. Absolutely, right? Very, very stubborn. So, yes. do you feel that that's what you've been doing, being very stubborn? I know I'm very stubborn. <laughs> She was rebellious as a as this uh, regal person, and now she's not re always um, right. Going, going, that's who you are. If you tell me to go that way, I'll go that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that's, that's why you're new. here on Earth because yeah. there's a lot of other people who are mm -hmm. the same way too. Yeah. Now, where is it that you live? I live in the south of France. So right where, now we're in the UK. So um, thousands kilometers. Thousand K. Wow, that's pretty far from here. Oh, yeah, that's a long way. Yeah, and, and the car and the train and yeah, more train. But you made it. Yeah, I did. How long had you been waiting to come here? One and a half years. And she made it in this bed. And there yeah. weren't that many sessions. So right. if you're meant to have a session, you will, and you will come at the exact time. Mm -hmm. You feel the timing was good too. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's also true, like. You write that your higher self is going to prepare, mm -hmm. and about two, three days beforehand, I had a felt self coming in and I had transmissions, and it's absolutely true. Yeah, and my train left um, Paris at 1313. <laughs> I arrived here in London at 14. 44 local time. So, at all those little little sequential yeah, numbers absolutely. were being told. Yeah. You, it was like little breadcrumbs yeah. being shown. Absolutely. You're on the right path. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you re recommend this experience to other people? Of course, I do, like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and did uh, you feel hypnotized? No. Absolutely no, not. You don't feel mm -hmm. hypnotized. Right. Okay. Uh, it feels very natural. It feels like you're making it all up. Mm -hmm. You are conscious. You're awake. Yeah. You're aware. You're hearing things all around. Mm -hmm. 
but the drill, the drill. The drill. <laughs> yeah, you good. hear you hear things, but yeah. you do things yeah. all the time in your life mm -hmm. where there's noise. There's this is no different. Mm -hmm. You're not sleeping, mm -hmm. so noise is just part of no yeah. normal life. Yeah. So and light is also. A part of it. You, you weren't Absolutely. sleeping, so I'm not going to turn the lights off on no, you. No, 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 no. Right? No, no, no. So this is very natural, yeah. and uh, if you would like a session with me, just go to my website, albaweinman.com. Click on the hypnosis tab, and underneath there is a newsletter. Sign up. Sign up for the newsletter. It's the only way that I do my sessions. I send this newsletter out about once a month, and it will tell you where I'm going to go. Right now, we are in the UK. But I travel all over the place. Mostly I'm in Miami, but I do travel. So if you see a place where you'd like to go, click on that link. They go really fast. Yes. And sign up. And um, that's it. We'll see each other. So I hope you enjoyed this, this session as I did. And I hope I get to meet you sometime too. Thank you for watching. Hawk. Hawk. Oh, the best part. The best part. Oh. Oh, thank you so much. You did great. Thank you so, so much. Oh.